Dave, I suppose it's been a few days since the defeat at Sutton last week. Have you had more time to reflect and any any change of thoughts from what your initial thoughts were after the game? Uh, no, no, no change of thoughts um, in, in terms of where and how the game went. Things didn't go in our uh, in, in our favour. We we didn't do ourselves um, ourselves justice. We we. We lost. Um, we lost too many individual battles over the over the pitch, or didn't win um, the individual battles we need to, and made errors, uh, and ultimately that, that that lost us a lost us a game. What you have to do is reflect, learn from it, move on, um, take positives if there are positives there to be taken, um, and and we have a different challenge on on Saturday now, one that we're looking forward to. It's important to note, I think, um, we spoke about Sutton, uh, we'll mention them again, really. Throughout the season, we always kind of <clears> to have that drop. And after the defeat, whilst the lads were getting changed, getting on the bus, you you were out there giving them their, 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 round, of, their pl- round of applause. You know, did, did you feel like that, that was just exactly what they deserved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, 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 over the, the course of the season, I've had the best, the, not always the best, the most consistent team, wins the league and, um, and and they've been the most consistent team I think everyone else has been looking for them to um, to have a drop but I think going back to when we played them um, at the end of January um, and although we beat them at, at the Vic we always felt as a, a sort of management team that, that, that they were the, the ones maybe if they could keep everybody fit best suited to um, just keep churning out uh, churning out results and the biggest blip they had was was a, a run of a run of draws, if you like, with a, a what I think one defeat sh- shoved in there. So they um, they were relentless in, in what they did, and like they fully deserving of the of the title. Um, and again, within that, I think again from a, um, a, a my perspective, it was I would always offer my congratulations, and 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 they deserve that. Um, and from a player's perspective. Obviously, COVID protocols and things says we, we needed to get off the pitch, and we were told by the national league we need to get off off the pitch and, and in our environment as quickly as, as quickly as possible, um, because we didn't know what would happen on the pitch in terms of supporters and things. Like that. In fairness, the supporters were, like I say, were great. Stayed off the pitch as the as, as they sort of stated, um, and their players and staff were able to, I suppose, enjoy their celebrations. Hopefully, from from our perspective, we can enjoy similar type of celebrations um, towards the back end of June. Obviously, I know you've reflected on the result and you would have watched it back and done your analysis. In terms of the players, how do you think they see it? Do they see it, see it as a wake-up call before they go into the playoff games? Um, everyone's, everyone's individual in terms of that. Um, for me, I don't think it's a, a wake-up call. Um, I don't think we've needed a, a wake-up call. I think... Um, what it just re-emphasises really is that um, if if you're not at it and if you're not um, winning those individual battles, those unit battles over over the pitch over ninety minutes, then as a collective, you're gonna have lots of things have to go in your favour in order to, to win a game. And it just it just backed up that we weren't. I say we we didn't we didn't do enough. Um, we didn't deal well enough um regardless of the mistakes that, that we made um with what was what was chucked at us if you like um and and also alongside right side, what we have to do is is move on um and not just move on within or oh, after the game it's easy to move on move on within the course of a game um and not let mistakes or not let um disappointments um, become an overriding um, factor within that within that game. Um, sometimes it's difficult because emotionally you look at it and 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 say that the game's nil nil. Although they've <clears throat> although they've got the conditions at the back and we've probably been penned back in and not been apart from like I say hitting the hitting the post and keep making a save after after ten minutes. Not been a huge threat at one end when the mistake comes. It can be a bit of a uh, a bit of a deflation. Thought we were having our like I say, we scored a perfectly good goal. We have our best spell at the start of the second half, and then 
concede a, a poor goal from our perspective. And and sometimes the man of those goals um, can have an effect psychologically. What we have to do is is not allow that to happen, move on, um, and think about the process we need to go through to get ourselves back in the back in the game. We need to do that better, and we've got to use that, as, like I say, that experience, um, hopefully, to our advantage in what might be adverse times going into playoff games. On to this weekend, then, and we'll, we'll get on to the fans returning. But we've had such a great uh, home record as we come to our last league home game of the season. What have you based that home record around it, it making the Victoria Park such a fortress, even without the fans as well? It's it's a tough one. Um, what, what we've tried to uh, try to do is be um, it's be pretty consistent, regardless of whether we're whether we've played home or away, um, and. I don't know why. Um, the, the certainly results away from home haven't been as as positive as they have been at, at home. Um, I'm not sure what that, that anomaly is. Certainly from our perspective, it's it's not around setup. It's not around intent. It's not around work rate. It's not around sort of data that we produce. It's just one of those things we've built. Like so, we've built that up. I think we we started to um, to sort of get things going and. At the back end of last season, when we had um, supporters in the ground, probably didn't start the best um, at home this season. Um, but like I say, I made it a I made it a challenging, uh, a challenging environment for for teams to come, and that's something that we're going to have to do um, moving forward, regardless of I say, regardless of what division we're in. Um, and it is made hopefully an awful lot easier by having our, our supporters in the in the ground and, and that'll be the case for the first time on Saturday. So just mentioned there, 17, around about 1,700 uh, Hartlepool fans will be in the Vic for the first time in over a year. How excited are you and the players to hear that roar of Victoria Park? We we heard it at Sutton on Sunday, they had about 1,200 in and as you can imagine, with with the title uh, in contention, they were they were very loud. So you can't. So the excitement of seventeen hundred poolies is certainly something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's there's nothing uh, there's nothing better um, in terms of um, I suppose goosebumps on your arms and things like that when when you come out of the tunnel and there's that um, that eruption of noise the 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 chanting that goes on through the game obviously the emotion of, of scoring goals and being able to celebrate not just with um, a group of maybe twenty of us there'll be um, sort of seventeen hundred plus um, so that that lesson all them things are things are brilliant um, and also it's an opportunity for like I say for for us to to thank them for their support. Um, in a different way this 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 season, um, and hopefully we we've given them um, some joy away from the football club, um, and we've now got some big games that we can we can all look forward to, um, and some hopefully real excitement. Weymouth uh, head to the Vic this Saturday. Um, another one of them teams that obviously due yeah. with no one getting relegated, not a lot of play for, but it was kind of the same. With main head, they probably had a little bit more a play for. What are you expecting from them? Obviously, I suspect you've got that result back in January in the back of the mind when we went down to their place and they won one nil. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I expect from from all the teams probably a little, a little bit different. I, I watched we watched their last couple of games. Um, certainly, obviously, went to Notts County their last last away game. Um, lost the game three nil. Um, They'll probably be saying a similar thing to what I'm saying in the last game that we've lost three nil. The goals they can see the awful, they can see the penalty, um, which is dubious, soft at best, um, a, a free kick where the goalkeeper doesn't cover himself in in glory, um, and that puts the the game beyond them. But the, the, they're well in the game, um, and we know ourselves going to Notts County is no easy easy task um, at all. So I expect them to to come. And, and play, um, play with the freedom. They play in an expansive way. Um, they'll they'll press going off previous games that we that we've watched, um, and we know we've got to be absolutely bang at it in order to win. Um, as is the case with any game in, in this division, you can't um, you can't turn it on and off like a tap if you're not if you're not at it. Regardless of um, of who you come up against, you'll come unstuck. 
Um, and I think if you need proof away from um, away from our um, environment, if you like, you've only got to look last week and when Torquay go to look at its Barnet after 20 minutes, people think, oh yeah, that's that's that game done and the game finishes the game finishes level. Um, so again, top bottom, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyone can beat anybody, if, especially if you're, you're not right at it. You don't turn up. Just finally, team news ahead of this weekend. Uh, any, any knocks from the game uh, at Sutton? Obviously, we've missed Harvey Saunders for a few weeks. And just when you look at team news in the squad, how much does an eye on the playoffs come into consideration when you're picking your squad for Saturday? Yeah, it has to. Um, I, I know, I'm not like I'm not going to apologise for that because it can work in, in lots of different ways. Listen, I could I could pick players that are carrying little niggles or again in some instances they're 100 percent fit tomorrow and them get injured oh sorry on, on Saturday and them get injured in the game and miss a playoff game and you'll then probably in highs look back oh we shouldn't have played him I shouldn't have done this you, you, it's, it's easy to look back afterwards I think what we've had to do um probably since Chesterfield really um we've not probably been able to pick the team that or we've not had all options to be able to pick to, to pick the, the team that we maybe want to pick through injury, through suspension, through the schedule, through surface we've been playing on and, and through managing knocks, niggles, um, injuries that are allowing people to play, um, but allowing them to play probably not quite at 100% has meant that we've had to be um, we've had to be adaptable and really prioritised that, that says Listen, we're in the playoffs, brilliant. We want to finish as high up as we can. But regardless of playing two or three playoff games, I want to be able to pick the team that I'm able to pick um, going into those games. Now, some of those decisions are taken out of our hands. I'm not going to be able to pick um, pick Ben because he's out for the season. Um, but of the ones that we've got fit, can us as a management team um, have hopefully all of them available um, to be able to pick a team that can help us progress and help us um, achieve the ultimate aim of promotion.